Hey everyone, welcome to today's webinar on how to create a one-of-a-kind special effect using CSER heat transfer vinyl. With us today is Chad Poole, outside sales representative at CSER USA. How's it going, Chad? Hey everybody. Hey Zach, how are you? Good. I mean, excited to uh, talk about HTV. Uh, it's definitely been changing over the past handful of years. And, you know, it's kind of pivoted a little bit. Um, and just, you know, I'll be honest, Chad, I didn't realize how many really cool special effects can be done with HTV because it's been a couple of years since I was doing it uh, often in my shop. Um, you know, the old 15 years ago when I started, the first piece of equipment I bought was a heat press. The second piece of equipment was a cutter and I bought um, vinyl. And that's how, how most of us would get started in the industry. And that's still how a lot of shops get started in the industry. You know, a heat press will almost always be the first piece of equipment, but HTV has really changed over the past, you know, 15 or so years since I got in, I got started. And especially with these new digital uh, decoration methods like direct to film um, have also kind of changed HTV uh, into, again, what we're gonna focus here is all these really cool special effects that you cannot accomplish using a digital printer or may or may not be accomplishable with screen printing. But if it is, it's probably a lot more difficult with screen print versus cutting. So let's dive into it and talk about heat transfer vinyl, abbreviated as HTV. <clears throat> so sure. Uh, HTV typically starts with a roll of um, media or it could be a simple sheet. It doesn't have to be, you know, gigantic. We have it. And over the past, again, 10, 15 years since I've uh, joined the industry, it seems like the quality of the adhesion of the vinyl onto the substrate, the hand, the feel of it has gotten much better. And the act of weeding it has gotten a lot better. You know, it's not as difficult. Can, can you talk to us a little bit about like what you've seen over the past 10 or so years? For sure, and thank you for having us first first and foremost. We, we generally appreciate that. So um, that being said, I, I see the the rolling cutter behind you. I have a our cutter, the, the Juliet. I don't know if folks can see that behind me, but um, yeah, so like as you had mentioned before, most people that get in the industry generally start off with a, a heat press and a, and a vinyl cutter. And they'll use rolls of materials like you had just shown. and They'll take their their image and um, typically it's either an SG, SVG file or it's a vector type of image, um, bring it into their cut software. And most products out there, probably at least 85%, 90% of our lineup, you're going to mirror your image and basically you put it in the cutter, cuts it, you, you, you do the effect of weeding, which is pulling the excess away, and then you heat apply it. Um, I would agree with you in that it's definitely transformed over the past decade or so, you know, most folks would do names and numbers. That was the big, that was yep. the big kick for, for vinyl, right? Especially if you're a screen company and somebody comes to you and they've got 20 different roster, you know, names on the roster and it's, it's four colors. It might not be cost efficient for you to do that and to burn all those screens and have that variable data. So that's where vinyl really came into play. Um, that being said, I would agree with you as well in that things have changed dramatically over the years with the way that we're able to manufacture the vinyl. Um, Caesar is in, it, we are one of the very few that actually manufacture our vinyl. Um, it, it's done in Vicenza, Italy, and then it comes over here to Michigan where we convert it down and, and disperse it amongst our uh, great group of distributors and resellers. Um, that being said, since we manufacture the vinyl ourselves, we are in control of our own destiny meaning that if there's a, a Caesar logo on that, that vinyl, um, you don't have to worry about it falling off, cracking, fading, peeling, um, because we manufacture the product in house. So we, we do that as a, a, as a give back to our loyal users um, because anybody can get vinyl from anywhere, right? You can go to Amazon or you can go to a, a local store and grab it. If you don't know what you're working with, it might heat apply great, but the, at the end of the day, after two washes or so, it might crack or fade or peel. Um, and the truth of the matter is, 
the end user, those folks really don't care about what kind of vinyl you're using. They, they care. It's your brand. It's the customer's brand. So yep. we want to make sure that we set everybody else up for, um, for success. And um, we're, we're happy to be a part of it. And yes, it's definitely trending now. Uh, it's certainly special effects, but also, you know, we're, we're aware of, of DTF and, and screen's never going to go away. Vinyl's never going to go away. There is a piece for everything, right? Yeah. Um, but again, we are seeing it more and more with those textured effects, those different type of, of visible effects that you can't achieve with, with certain technologies, but also using it in conjunction with. So, you know, we're, like I said, we're aware of, of the other technologies and we're not, we're not trying to combat them whatsoever, but just by adding something small or something with texture or something that has a, a shimmer effect or whatnot, you're just creating the more value for your for your garment and you're able to, to ultimately charge more yeah and um again like you you've pointed out um every decoration process has a time and place they're all a bunch of tools in your tool belt and you're going to use one for different applications you don't want to cut you know thousands of prints with a vinyl cutter and heat press them one at a time but you also don't want to burn a screen for just a name so right. you know, every process always has it and every process can be done well or poorly if you're yes. not, you know, using, if you're not respecting the variables or, or if you're using inferior um, consumables, you're not going to get the best results. Now, can, can you tell us a little bit more? I should have started with this. CSER is, you know, a, if not the leader when it comes to manufacturing HTV. Can, can you tell us a little bit more about the company and how long you guys have been doing it? For sure. So um, we've been around since uh, 1977, I believe. Um, again, started in uh, Vicenza, Italy. Then it branched over here into North America. Um, and we've been in control of the product for, she's almost almost 50 years. It's crazy how time flies oh, um, no. when you look back at, at the dates. But um, yeah, so we, we've been doing it a long, long time. Our, our name has been out there a long time. Um, but really what put us on the map is, is Easy Weed. And it's in the name, Easy to Weed, but it's also the, the benefit we have with that material. Um, it's a one second tack. So if you're doing multiple colors, like we had mentioned with, if, if, you know, if you have a screen job and it's only four shirts and it's six colors, it's really kind of wasteful for you to, for you to do that as to where you can just load up the vinyl, don't have to say no to the job. And then you could just layer it because with the one second tack, you're, you're lowering your labor costs, but you're also increasing your production. Yep. Um, so yeah, special effects are, and that's what we're going to really talk about because again there's so many and then they they keep coming out um you know i i was just at the atlantic city trade show and i was shown I didn't see you know, there i was there too <laughs> I, yeah i i saw um pat there and it was like yeah this like this is cool um new stuff that's coming you know new pattern prints and so forth um but but you know when it comes to htv it's it's again, one of the first things that most shops get into, it has a low barrier of entry, like most things in our industry. Um, the learning curve is not really anything drastic. It's not like screen printing and embroidery where it takes time to really hone in your skills. Um, if you're using the right media and you respect the variables, uh, you can put out a really good product very you know, early into the business. Um, the big thing about uh, HTV, because we're cutting it, we must be working with a vector file. And Correct. that could be one of the bigger hurdles for you know some startups is getting that artwork vectorized. Um, but there's a lot of different ways you can go about that um, using CorelDRAW, Illustrator, AI tools. It's never been easier to get something vectorized and ready to be cut than uh, before. 100%. I would um, agree with that 100%. And that, and that's you know, that's part of the change, right, over the past 10 years. You know, there, there's companies out there to where you could provide them with artwork and they would automatically trace it and draw it and send it back to you within 24 hours. But um, now, I mean, cut software in general has gotten, it has improved so much over the past decade as well. Um, you know, we, we just launched our cutters, which we're very proud of. Um, but 
outside of all the bells and whistles and all the things it can do, um, oh, there they are right there. Uh, they're phenomenal. I mean, they're they're about three to four times faster than your entry level cutter craft cutter, so to speak. Um, but then even behind you or, or next to it on the slide here, <clears throat> you know, your your other entry level cutter, pro level type of cutter, probably your Roland's, your Graft Hex, um, and and shout out to Roland. They're they're good friends of mine, and I have a lot of a lot of respect for them. I, I've been working with them for over a decade. But um, you're talking a big price point difference too. So for yep. you know your, your craft level type of cutter, you're around two ninety nine, three hundred dollars. Versus a pro level type of cutter, you're you're generally in that sixteen to eighteen hundred dollar ballpark. Um, with with our units, the twelve inch unit and the twenty four inch unit. The twelve inch unit is called the Juliet. The 24 inch room, uh, unit is called the Romeo, hence a, a little tie to our <laughs> Italian roots. But um, <clears throat> like I said, they're about three times faster than your entry level craft cutter. They're really kind of a hybrid between entry level, pro level, because they both can be used with a mat. Because the pinch rollers move forward, you can either use a mat, you can use just the, the material itself, or you can put actual roll holder behind it. So it's, it's kind of that hybrid of in between. Um, if cost is a factor or if learning is a factor, um, but going to, to off my, my tangent here, you know, once we, we started to talk about all the functionality of the unit, I said, that's great. But if the software is not user friendly, forget it, right? Because it can yep. be the best car in the world. But if it's a bad driver, it's, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's not going to it's not going to work out great. So um, that said, I've worked with many and every pretty much every type of cut software or rip software out there for large format. And I will say that our cut software is the best I've ever used. I mean, it, it really is. You don't even need Corral or AI. If you bring in a, a, um, a JPEG that's a little bit pixelated, it'll automatically uh, trace it for you, vectorize it for you, put a cut line on it for you. Wow. Um, so it's, it's really, really intuitive. It comes with over 1500, I believe, pre-made templates of, of art that are also editable. So if you type in St. Patrick's day or Easter is probably more appropriate at this time of the recording, um, you know, you may have Easter bunnies or Easter eggs and this and that, but you can bring that file in, hit upload and it automatically brings it in the workspace, but you can also edit it. So you can put happy Easter. And then my daughter's name is Clara. You can put Clara under there or, or however you want to do it and manipulate it that way. Or you can take out some of the eggs of that basket. So um, it, it's very, very intuitive. And um, if I can learn it within a half hour, um, anybody can learn it. So it, it's, it's, it's well, a great software. We're really proud of it. And, and, you know, you don't, in my, my experience, Chad, I don't need it to do a lot of things. I just needed to do those handful of things and make it really simple for the users. Um, because yeah, it's not like we're we're not manipulating colors and so forth. It's, it's not the design program. A uh, cut program is really uh, using a, ve a vector, using lines and curves to map out where we're going to cut the media. And, you know, when we were prepping for this uh, webinar, um, you talked to me about the Romeo and the Juliet, and it made complete sense to me. Um, Roland makes a lot of things outside of cutters. I mean, they make keyboards and things. Anybody who's ever seen a Roland product knows that these are well-made pieces of equipment, but they're not cheap. I mean, this GS24 is $1,800 to $2,000, yeah. but it's got now bells and whistles that I've never used, you know? Yep. And, and it's sure. over. Yeah, um, and, and it can be overkill. So, so we again, we we tried to simplify that for the customer, and then somebody that's looking to get into this um, without the constraints of a craft cutter, um, but also you know more affordable. As as you'd mentioned earlier, it's a it's just a, an inexpensive way to to upstart and really create your own business. And you know, for the the Juliet, I believe uh, right now MSRP is for three ninety nine. Uh, the Romeo is six ninety nine, so for half the cost of yeah. a pro level type of cutter, with the ability of having that software and not having to have Corel or Adobe, because essentially the the, the larger cutters are their cut software is really just a driver. So it's yep. really ready made files that you need to just mm -hmm. send to it. 
Um, so the, the fact that you can use ours in conjunction and really have a design space for it as well without constraints or, or, or limitations or worries about your artwork getting out there, um, you know, it, it really is a, a great way to get, get into the industry. Or to that point, even somebody that already maybe they're doing DTF transfers or they have DTF equipment in house or DTG, you know, screen, all these different technologies that we have out there by bringing us a small, small upfront cost into, into your shop and then being able to create these effects on top of what you're already doing, again, you know, creates more profit margin. Yeah, no, and I, I hey, makes total sense to me. You know, if if I could start today and you said this one's around 2000, this one's 700, I would always ask myself, well, is this three times better? And am I going to use it three times more and things like that? And it, no. Um, yeah. So it makes a lot of sense to me. And there's a difference between, you know, the Juliet and the Cricket. <laughs> Uh, because, you know, in a you weird said. way, cricket, <laughs> cricket has made HTV, you know, popular uh, yeah. again. You know, it, it, it's really um, uh, where a lot of, um, you know, the, the crafters like to kind of do their own thing. But um, that medium range just makes total sense, um, in, in my opinion, yeah. because there's not a lot. I mean, there's 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 things to cutting, obviously. Um, but it's really three variables, right, Chad? Yes, for sure. So um, you've got your blade itself. Um, sorry about that. Um, you've got your blade itself, which is very important, um, especially when we're working with different materials or even over time, the usage of that blade can dull. Um, generally, they'll come with a 45 or 60 degree blade. We have both that come with our, um, our machine. Our machine's a little bit different as opposed to, like you mentioned, a Cricut or Silhouette. Um, they have more of what's called a considered a fixed blade, meaning that if you're buying a blade, you're buying, buying the entire housing unit that's specific for it. So, you know, there, there's, um, I think Cricut has, uh, you know, I, I forget what they're called, but it's like lower force, higher force. You've got rotary blades out there. You've got... Um, different tools for specific for what you are cutting that said with what you have there in the picture and i'm going to show you briefly on uh on my end here when we developed ours we decided not to um, pigeonhole somebody into purchasing the specific blade for the specific material but rather use a, a pro level type of of um, blade holder such as roland or craft tech so this is ours um, i know it's probably hard to see but that's the blade itself and that's the blade holder so when you're when you're working with htv really you want a little bit more or less i mean we typically say use a, a, the width of a credit card so you could take out a, a you know a, a credit card or a license and you kind of just put it up to that and that's probably the po proper exposure because if you overexpose that blade that's going to be quicker for it to break or dull um Granted, there are times where that is good to, to overexpose the blade a little bit when you're working with thicker materials, but in general, about the width of a credit card, and always have extra blades on, on hand. Oh, yeah. um, 45 and 60, 45 is going to be able to cut most, if, if not all things. 60 degrees is going to be for more fine detail or for thicker products, such as our brick, or if you've got artwork that's really intuitive and thin cursive, it's going to give you a little bit more detail with the 60 degree. You know, put in perspective and like screen printing terms, even, you know, you have different mesh counts, you have different squeegee durometers there. You, you want to, you know, cutting is not terribly difficult if you follow the the instructions and all of Caesar's, uh, you know, types of vinyl tells you, hey, use this type of blade to cut it. And then, like you also said, the actual detail in the artwork may uh, also determine that. Um, the exposure, just like off contact with screen printing, too little, too much could potentially have problems. It's not like this is difficult to learn to master. I, mean, I just got to rotate and get it at the right spot. Pressure and speed, though. So, again, what, what happens with cutting, and I didn't want to make it all loud and so forth, but we have media that will be rolled back and forth, and this help, holds the cutting uh, blade, and it comes back, and it comes down onto the media to cut the design. And after it's been cut, it, it still looks 
you know, there's two parts of uh, HTV. You have the media and the carrier. So the carrier is pretty much always clear and then the media itself. So what you're doing is you're cutting the media, not through the carrier. If you're using the wrong blade, you have it exposed too hard, you have too much pressure, you could cut through the carrier and then you're no good. So it's rotating the media back and forth. The blade comes down, puts the pressure on, cuts the media. And then once you have it off, comes probably the least favorite task, and that is to weed the access. So Depends who you talk to. Some people find it therapeutic. I find them crazy. Oh, man. <laughs> and, and if you see right there, so it's a cut design. And then they're using a tool. I couldn't find my Caesar one. Caesar has like the best one. And it does, it's a lot more therapeutic when you have that versus this little dental tool that I have. But um, when you go to pick and weed away, you then are left with your, uh, essentially your final uh, transfer to then put onto the product and heat apply it. And just like you uh, said, Chad, you mirror it the majority of the time because you're cutting the media, but then the carrier is what's sitting like that. I don't know how to really explain it well, but what, once you're ready to actually apply it, this is what you got. Um, the weeding portion has gotten so much better than when I first started. I mean, it just like so easily peels. It still takes some time, but um, again, it's worth it because we're about to talk about all of these cool special effects because there's no other way for a lot of these to accomplish that look. And even though it might be a little bit more labor intensive, it also has a higher, you know, value that we're adding to the product and the customer's willing to pay more for it. I mean, some of these fashion things, it, it's kind of like, you know, you can make somebody an $80 shirt and like, hey, this is a true one of one and everybody's going to ask you how you did it. Um, it's not something that was just thrown on a screen press or, you know, DTG or DTF print. Um, so let's, Chad, let's run through a list of the different types of HTV Caesar cells, and then we'll dive into each one. So, sure. um, I'll, I'll click, you give us the name. Okay. Um, we've got a plethora. So we've got Aurora, we've got Blackboard, we've got Brick, we've got our Glitter, uh, Holographic, we have Metal, Sparkle, Easy Weed, obviously, Adhesive. Eco Stretch is a new product. We have Easy Weed Electric, Easy Weed Extra. We have Easy, we have Glow and Easy Glow. We have Subblock. This is the other we glow. Have, <laughs> that's the other glow. We have Puff. Uh, we have a reflective option. We have Strip Flock. We have Twinkle. And I think I forgot to add. Um, DTV, which we're going to talk easy, about. Easy color. Yeah, I, I believe it's all on the slides and we probably actually yeah. have two or three more on there that we've added since we've talked because <laughs> we're constantly trying to, to get ahead of the curve and, and uh, introduce new products. So I know you saw one of them at, at Atlantic City and, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're always trying to be innovative. So, well, and, and there is a wide network of CSER dealers too, right? <laughs> yes. Yes, we have well, I think over 60 now. Uh, no, that's, I think we're close to 90 actually, distributors. Um, the way our business model works is we manufacture the material. Um, again, we bring it over here to Michigan and we convert it down and then disperse it amongst our network. So when we have, we have two, two variations of our network. And uh, although they have official titles, we're all considered partners. We, we don't, um, we, we, we're very strict on who carries our product because we don't for we a don't want to oversaturate but also we want somebody that's going to um, work help us help them and work in conjunction versus hey just carry our product and off away we go no it's our job to um, help them and, and by them purchasing from us it helps us so it's all full circle but um, the first tier is uh, called an authorized distributor so we, like I said, we, I think we have close to 90 of them now, but um, they're going to be your, your, your bigger main branches that carry your product, they'll stock product. And then we also have a group of authorized resellers. 
So that's going to be more focused towards um, brick and mortar, walk in, get some vinyl, um, whether it's just a sheet or a yard, if you're on a pinch, um, versus going to uh, Michael's or Joann's, who, again, fantastic partners of ours, but because of the way that the, the media is manufactured, we've got labels, we've got cores, we've got shrink wrap. Um, it's going to be a little bit more expensive for you to go get a, a yard or so at, at Michael's or Joann's versus just going into a reseller. And the great thing about the resellers is, and distributors for that for that matter, but any of our partners. But um, Zach, as you know, we're in a very niche community. It, the, the worst question I ever get asked is, at a dinner party is, what do you do? <laughs> like, how much time do you have, right? I'm like, well, I manufacture heat transfer. No, I, just, I make t-shirts, right? Um, but since it's a niche community, especially in these resellers, a lot of them just like to chat. You know, I've been in so many reseller shops just to introduce myself. Mm -hmm. I pop in unannounced. Sometimes I give them a call and um, they're so happy just to chat and, and talk about what's trending and what's new in the industry. And um, the same way that they interact with, with me, they do with every single customer. So when you go there, they may show you something cool and unique that, you know, I didn't even think of. So it, it, it's, it's a great community and a great um, business model that we have. So uh, that's, that's kind of how you can get our materials is, um, through a, a distributor or through a reseller. If you're going through a distributor, it's probably going to be more bulk volume. Reseller is going to be more for your craft sheets or, or one yard or so. But um, either of either of them uh, carry our product. Either of them will, um, you know, will we'll make sure your needs are needs are met. And if you have questions on where to purchase Caesar products, you can email us at info at caesarna.com and we will find the nearest reseller distributor for you now and and thanks so much chad for explaining all that and and you you made me think of something you know like getting uh htv should be properly stored in an environment that isn't drastically changing temperatures and humidity correct no like we yes <laughs> yes yeah. and no. Yes, yes and no. Yeah. So the reason I, I I'm being a little facetious about that is, um, yes, it is not as sensitive as some other technologies. However, so I have rolls that are three years old and um, they work just fine. And and again, that that kind of circles back to I know it has a Caesar brand on it, so I know that it was manufactured properly. Generally, we we say a shelf life of about a year. Um, or two but if you're storing it in a in your garage in alaska yeah it might be a little bit different yeah. um versus if you're down in florida in the garage in the humidities but if it's in a somewhat controlled environment um we're we're very confident in the longevity of our product yep no it make, makes total sense i mean again just so everybody knows like consumables <laughs> their shelf life is really going to come down to a lot of you know one the quality and how they're manufactured but also how you store them you know if you sure. you know with with uh yeah i would think humidity would be a bigger problem than it less. is and actually the cold sometimes is beneficial to the shelf life okay yeah no makes makes complete sense because um yeah yeah, humidity, uh, respect it. I'll tell you, that was something it took me years to like, I was in my 20s and I'm like, just humidity. No, <laughs> to respect it, you won't have to, you know, do some things. Um, okay, sure. so let's kick it <laughs> off with this first special effect, Aurora. Is that how I pronounce that correctly? That's correct. So we'll kind of briefly go through briefly go through each product because we have way too many of them, but um, there is a rhyme and reason for everyone. Um, so we'll start with Aurora. I do have some um, what we call mini teas with me that I can kind of show on camera and hopefully it'll it'll paint a, a little bit better picture visually. But um, of course, Aurora, I, oh, I do have one actually. Um, so Aurora is almost like an iridescent twill type of look uh, it, again effects it, it's something that's different it's very hard to capture on our website um, because if you're just taking a picture of it flat it doesn't really give that but if you can see as i move it it has an iridescent effect to it 
So it's very cool, very unique, and it has a bit of a texture to it too. Yeah, no, I mean, as again, you have there, it's almost like an encapsulated yep. textured twill with a, an iridescent effect on the back end. Looks like it comes in <clears> around <throat> 10 different color effects. I mean, I don't even know if I'd call it truly a color because it kind of has that wavy um, encapsulated texture you know, look. Um, and then explain to us as well, Chad, please, what, um, you know, this in the middle of the box bottom, I, I see like the recycling icon and so forth. What, when, when somebody's looking at Caesar's products, they typically have these. And what do these icons mean? Yep. So a lot of them are just, um, you know, we, we've got to go through all of our testing for um, compliances. So, you know, you'll have CPSIA, uh, Okatex, uh, and since we manufacture in Italy, um, I'm sure you know, but a lot of folks maybe don't pay attention to this. European compliances on products are a lot stricter than the United States. We are seeing an uptick, and I'll get into this a little bit more when we get into the eco stretch, but we're seeing an uptick on uh, more stricter compliances uh, in addition to helping the environment. And then, so any kind of badge you see down there is generally going to indicate um, the the certification that that we've gone through for when we do our, our testing um which we go through the rigma route i mean for any product we bring on we have a fantastic fantastic um in-house team that does all the all of our support team they do advanced testing and um i mean when we get a product and we'll heat apply it to different you know cotton so uh poly blends all these different types of 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 material that we we have for blanks but in addition to that we're testing it and we're throwing you know nuts and bolts and beer caps and gum and whatever my wife probably yells at me for keeping in my pockets <laughs> but what we're, what we're doing is we're testing for we want to see if there's color consistency we want to see if there's any abrasion to the product we want to make sure that um there's no cracking or peeling any any types of any variation of change we won't launch it so all of our materials we do that for over 50 washes on different um, different cycles different detergents once we hit 50 we're just wasting energy at that point and yep. <laughs> and detergent but um our materials if it says caesar on it will will last longer than the garment itself so that's kind of what those indicate and then the last one there i'm glad you brought this up one thing we didn't touch on in the beginning is um folks that have lasers so about 80% of our, 85% of our lineup is um, laser friendly. Meaning if you had like a Glowforge or, um, you know, there's there's several other, I, I can't think of um, the one I used to use back then, but um, there's several other ways to, to laser and most folks use them for different purposes. Maybe it's twill cutting or um, engraving or something like that. But our materials, like I said, 85% of them are laser friendly, meaning that you can cut it with a laser. Um, and not only is that beneficial for <clears throat> speed purposes and whatnot, but in addition to that, when we were talking earlier about weeding, you don't have to weed because you can just blow through the cavities and it's already done for yeah. it. You need to apply it. So um, that's not not something that uh, I think we we get out there enough. And, and um, yeah. We definitely need to promote that more. But if you have a, a laser, you, you can incorporate heat transfer vinyl with a heat press, and um, now you have a, a, another avenue of, of revenue or a, a different thing you can launch yeah. with in addition to whatever you're doing. And like those glow forges and so forth, they've gotten, you know, engraving machines have gotten cheap. They've got that more of that entry level, that Romeo and Juliet yeah. option. Um, and yeah, really good to know. Um, <laughs> All right, talking about the blackboard because this is really cool and it sounds just like what it is. I mean, it does exactly what it sounds like, right? I mean, it's literally like printing a blackboard that you can write on with chalk. So yeah, talk about it. exactly. So you, you kind of nailed it. Um, it's in the name and a lot of our products is in the name, but um, blackboard is a heat transfer vinyl that is, um, it comes in one color, it's just black, uh, but essentially you can, cut it, weed it, heat apply it, and then you can take chalk and you can customize. Um, you know, we've got a, a, a garment there that says today's special. So it's fun for restaurants or, you know, we see a lot of it with um, 
I've got three little ones. So uh, we see a lot of it with children because they can create and draw on their own. Um, schools, teachers, uh, you know, for classroom purposes use this a lot. So, um, it, I mean, it is it niche kind of? Yeah, but it's also something that you can't do with the other technologies we, we spoke about. Yeah, earlier, so. yeah. Try, try doing that with screen printing or... <laughs> Um, how about the brick 600 is something that I think a lot of our viewers, uh, have in their closet and they don't realize that it's essentially, it may be either, either it is brick, uh, 600 or they have something very similar and they absolutely love it because every time I buy, you know, at any type of leisure wear, a lot of Nike and Adidas shorts or even, you know, shirts and so forth. I, it, it has that silicone and, and it's just, gosh, it's so different than any other type of three-dimensional print. And it just, the perceived value is really there. So can you talk to me a little bit about the 600? 100%. And, um, I agree with you on almost all of that. So almost a lot of it may or may not be your product. <laughs> um, but if you look at any performance where really, um, we're seeing huge trends. If you think of like a, a golf polo or even uh, women's leggings, you know, the, you'll see this little thing on the sleeve there. And it's usually a, a raised layer of um, almost silicone field material. So Under Armour, Nike, Adidas, uh, on, uh, for, for more women uh, based garments like Lululemon. Um, what you're doing is, and I have a, a, a small sample here, but you can see it's raised. So by adding this, and can again, it could be a conjunction of what you're already, you know, it could be a, a screen print transfer or it could be cut only vinyl. But what you're doing by adding this to the left chest, or you know, people are getting very unique in where they're actually decorating these days. So it might be the the left sleeve here, it might be the back of the neck, it might be, you know, we're seeing a lot of actually. Um, down by the bottom of the, the right side of the garment here. Yep. If you use this material for those purposes, your profit, you're just creating that retail perception that profit margin is going to go way up because we're seeing it on hats. We're seeing it all throughout, you know, different types of um, garments of performance wear and whatnot. Um, but that said, it's just creating something again that, that is unique. It's thick, you know, back, five years ago, people didn't want texture. They wanted the softest, thinnest. I don't want to feel it. <laughs> um, yeah. But now, and I attribute a lot of it to the, those Nike, Under Armour, Adidas, um, people want that that feel. They want that raised textured look. And that's that's a perfect example of what this product's used for. This um, and two other products that we're going to go through are, are one of our most popular sellers right now. Oh, yeah. And, and it's not like puff. You know, it's different. And, and that's the silicone itself. Just it's just different. And and again, there's a yes. lot of great positive, you know, feeling like and and you're right. I see it also locker tags, just a lot of different um, name brands are, yep. are definitely using it. Um, and just that thickness is just. Yeah, again, try it, it. It's like high density screen printing, but even bigger. I mean, you couldn't, it, I don't know how you could get really that big um, with, with screen. Um, but speaking of like popular uh, easy weed, I mean, this is the kind of staple from CESA, right? I mean, look how many colors it comes in. And I know there's also a lot of different types of easy weed we're about to talk about. Yes. So um, really quick, sorry, I saw one more sample I wanted to show you guys. Uh, so this is our, our brick. We, we do something called embossed. So this is our brick layered with eco stretch. So you can create an embossed effect with the brick as well. Um, people find that very unique, and very cool. Again, it's kind of a supplement for patches, but. Um, that's why it's... when you see the layerable right there, very important, right? That way you know very... that. You very can important. be stacking them and if it's layerable it can be layered with other CSER HTV right it doesn't have to necessarily be the exact same one correct so if it's layerable for most purposes um you can create as much different design and detail as you want 
And then even if you wanted to use a product that's not necessarily layerable, you can use that as the foreground or, or what we call, you know, the top of the uh, yep. top of the, the product. So if you wanted to create some unique effects that way. Um, yes, EasyWeed is by far what put us on the map. Um, it, it's again, it's in the name. It's easy to weed. So if you've got a lot of fine detail or something that you're working with that has a, a plethora of different colors or maybe there's thin lines in your artwork somewhere, this is really um i mean you could open google right now and you type in best htv or which htv should i use um not to kind of toot our own horns but we actually did a, a quick study with with chat gpt since ai is taking off we, <laughs> we we asked it you know which is the best htv in about five or six different variations of wording and every single time easy Read pops up um it is the number one htv in the world it's definitely what put us on the map and you know going back to the layerable thing really the big thing was it, it was a one second tack so you didn't have to sit there for 10 seconds and then apply the second layer for 10 seconds and then apply the third layer for 10 seconds or even in length with you know whatever it may be so um the the the, the one second tack is is really really kind of what put it on the map and the fact that it's just easy to use it's going back to what we talked about with the cutters i mean if if we set a customer up for success and they're able to use this easily, no matter what the equipment is, you know, we, we talked a little bit about Cricut earlier, but we owe a lot of um, a lot of gratitude to, to Cricut users and Silhouette users for that matter, because most of them use Caesar products. So um, we, we are not in the business of, of putting anybody down. If you if there's crafters out there and, and you like having four Crickets or four Silhouettes, by all means, you know, we're 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 not in intentionally trying to force feed our vinyl. We just feel that it's superior, and we just say that confidently. And really, Easy Weed is that that product for most folks. Well, yeah, it's like, I mean, think of it this way: the car is going to get you from point A to point B, but what you put into it to drive the fuel, you know, the fuel itself is probably more important than anything. Because if you put in exactly. They're just the wrong one. <laughs> it won't go anywhere. So, exactly. you know, it, it get the job done. But, yeah, you, you got to be using the right consumable to yep. uh, to, to do it. And, um, yeah, so so easy weed. Um, chat, are most of these hot peel, cold peel? How do I remove the carrier? Most of them are warmer hot peel. Um, okay. When we say warm is, is hot as you can just peel it. Um, <clears throat> warm is generally like 10 seconds or so, and then cold peel, you're going to want, want it to ultimately be completely cold. And a little tip or trick to that is if you have a stainless steel surface, or I even use the, the top of the cutter, um, if you flip your garment over and kind of put it on a cooler surface, it'll kind of accelerate that process. But that warm, you know, it makes total sense to me. There's absolutely hot, warm, and cold. Cold means I got to physically take the shirt off of the press and really let it cool. Warm allows me to, you know, give it a few seconds, peel it, and now start dropping that second color on it. If I don't have to get off the press and yeah, do a second have, color, exactly. it definitely helps the speed there. Um, yep. Okay. So talk to me about easy weed adhesive. And I actually have like an old piece of foil here. Um, but like there, there's several ways you can go about doing foil. And, and I think this is a really cool one. So yeah, explain to us this kind of this two-step process of how you can uh, do foil. So it, it is, um, I mean, correct. It's really geared towards, uh, towards foil. There is other purposes for it, but, um, it, it was really specifically made, uh, about 10 years back or so for for the foil effect and it's basically a clear clear media uh clear heat transfer vinyl that you cut your image into you apply it onto the garment and then you would take a, a, a like a square piece like zach had there or um you know people were getting this was really trending um probably about six seven years ago where people would take the the foils and you could even like crunch them up and yep. and almost distress distress type of effect um, and different patterns and different effects. Uh, so yeah, it's it's essentially hit the adhesive on the, the garment first, then you take the foil 
that whatever that foil is, even though the, the square is bigger than maybe the, the design is, where the adhesive is, is where the, the, the material is going to grab and, and retain on the, the garment there. Essentially self-weed because of the adhesive itself. Yes. So if, if you um, if you didn't want to, or if, if you had a, a patterned foil that we didn't necessarily carry on our easy patterns or an effect that we didn't necessarily have, you could cut weed the adhesive and then heat apply that there. But keep in mind, you still have to weed the adhesive. So it's not necessarily a full. Oh, yeah. 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 If we were there, I mean, yeah. we wouldn't be talking on this webinar. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, yeah. No, the point is after it's pressed and you pull the foil away. You know, that yep. it's just leaving it there. Um, exactly. You nailed it. Okay. Now, um, there are a lot of, okay, so some of these special effects have a special look, a special texture, um, and then other times it's just kind of still a spot you know, look just like the easy wear, easy weed versus the eco stretch, but it has a little bit different, um, you know, a little different hand and different capability. And and I always like to use screen printing as an example because it's just the go-to method, you know, always will be. There's yep. different types of Plastisol inks. You know, you have a max opaque, you have a stretch, you have a low temp, like there, there's different capabilities. So can you explain to us a little bit about the eco stretch and how it differentiates from the, you know, typical easy weed? Yes. So eco stretch, um, we just launched about three months ago. Uh, basically, it has we had a, um, a product called easy weed stretch that was similar to, to this product. But uh, the reason we, we made the change is when we were talking before about compliances and whatnot, um, we were able to, to find a way to manufacture this product uh, specifically using a water-based uh, system. So meaning there's no solvents or dyes when we, we dip the, the materials and create the full you know, color gamut of whatever the, the material color is, that's all now been changed to water-based. And what that has allowed us to do is Obviously, we, you know, we're, we're becoming more eco-conscious in the name again, but also in addition, the liner is 100% recyclable. It's water-based, meaning no harsh dyes or solvents. It's better in equipment. It's better for the environment. Um, and then the big thing is, so it is incredibly soft. I mean, incredibly soft. It's, you can stretch, rebound. So when we're talking about if you're doing performance wear, or if I'm doing if I get a job for um, a volleyball team and, and they want a, a small print on their their shorts there, well, they're going to be moving. So you want you want to be able to move with it. Or even if you're golfing and if it's somebody's got the, the back or left chest, you want to be you want to be able to to stretch with the garment. So um, it's great for for blends, um, polys. And then when we're talking about the hand, basically what that means is the feel of it. And the downfall to, or the downside, I should say, to HTV for the longest time, since its inception, has always been it's a little bit thicker. It's a little bit shinier. It's kind of heavier. Um, so if you've got a full front and it's a big square, you're right. To most to most of your, your point there, in a retail setting, most things are done with screen. But we have a lot of large commercial accounts that use EasyWeed and now EcoStretch, too, because back you know in the inception of heat transfer vinyl if it's a big square it's going to feel like a shield right yeah. um this is prop i i would put this against any material any other vinyl out there as far as the softest hand or softest feel it's also a matte finish which is what i prefer to a, a, yep. a, a gloss or a semi-gloss um but the biggest upsell on this product here is it can be applied as low as 250 degrees so 250 for I think it's eight seconds and then a hot peel. So if you've ever done any sort of heat applying and you've worked with garments that are difficult to heat apply to, uh, let's say you're, you're working with like a fanny pack or um, some sort of laptop case or something, there might be a, a, uh, adhesive or glue underneath there. And if you don't use a proper pillow, even if you do, you might sandwich that thing together once you heat it up. So by us allowing to go as low as 250, that avoids some of those complications. Um, 
you'll also sometimes see with with um, blends or polys or even darker color garments you'll see that big box that heat box yep. oh it's terrible yes and to us it's terrible right because you see it immediately and we're yep. our own worst worst critics um for the most Real. part yes that will wash out but it's not a great look when you give it to the customer so. no you know, no. it doesn't make you feel good. So no. this helps avoid a lot of that too. So if I had to sum this up, this is my favorite vinyl that we carry. This would be for my everyday use. Um, it, it's no, I, it makes favorite. sense. Chad, I would, I would, I like universal products <laughs> when possible, you know, because you, you, you're going to have to have different colors. Do you want to have five different, you know, essentially almost, um, you know, very similar effects and so forth versus this is very universal. That 250 degrees is huge when you're going on to black and navy and other dark polyester shirts because you will scorch it if you're not under 265 or so. Um, so that's huge to be able to go that low. And, and you know, the eco part is a big also bonus. I mean, there's just so much to like there. And, um, yeah, I, I, it makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, why not? Why, if, if we can help out the environment, there, there's yeah. no reason to not do that. And again, going back to the compliance thing, you know, if you look at California right now, you can't even buy Skittles. <laughs> so it's like, it's just the way of the world, right? And and, and we want to make sure that um, our product is going to be accessible in areas that are more strict on compliance. Yeah, I see this little icon here, and that's clearly the state of California. <laughs> and if it's good enough for California, then you know it's going to be good enough for the rest of the, it's the states. Between Europe, Europe and California, absolutely. Um, okay, uh, Easy Weed Electric. Um, so metallic, you know, uh, right? It, it, essentially, it's yes. a metallic flake look. Um, it's something a metallic similar. type of look. So like I don't that. Know if you can see my where, camera here, but it's um, it's almost got a, a sheen to it. Um, you know, again, creating an effect that you can't really achieve with some of these other technologies. And we have a lot of folks that actually use this in conjunction where we're talking about layering before. They made um, build up with Easy Weed or uh, our flock or maybe even you know any other different type of texture which we were talking about before and a lot of folks will finish off with this which creates a cool unique effect so um so don't want to hit on it too much but it's kind of in the name right it's it's electric it's got uh, a cool um metallic type of look to it very cool um easy weed extra so nylon <laughs> for those who don't you know, there's a lot of different types of fabrics and materials. And nylon is the black sheep, I would say, Chad. You know, nobody really likes to have to mess with it. It, it has its own challenges and so forth. But then it, it, it's popular. I mean, especially I feel like back in the 80s and 90s, and now it's really coming back. Um, a lot of your um, jawstring bags are, are made of nylon. So... Yeah, what, what exactly uh, does this extra um, bring to the table? Yes, so um, you, you made a couple of points there. You know, 80s and 90s, everything is coming full circle right now, which is it why is. we see a lot of puff, a lot of flock, a lot of uh, nylon. Um, kids, kid, you know, older generation these days are, are dressing like I did when I was 10 years old. So yeah. oh, everything's yeah. coming around, and it, it always does. Um, yep. So that said, nylon has always been traditionally very hard to uh, decorate, whether that be heat application or anything else. This product, um, it's going to be a bit thicker than than your Easy Weed, your Eco Stretch, anything like that. But um, the adhesive on the backing when we manufacture it, we, man we made sure to specifically manufacture this material to be applied onto nylon. So um, it has a really strong adhesive that is easily bondable into nylon. And then in addition, it's also a very abrasion resistant material. So we have a lot of folks that, I mean, that are doing a lot, a lot of volume and making a lot of money um, using our product on tents, on um, outdoor foldable chairs. Um, heat application is not just for, for 
for t-shirts and we try to tell that to as, as much people that we run into as possible because if it has a surface area that you can put underneath a heat press you can apply it uh, we have folks doing tents with it um, outdoor signage anything, anything like that and that's very helpful when a product's abrasion resistant because if you're working with something that you're not necessarily wearing you're not really going to carry about the hand or the feel of it but you want it to last when it rains outside or if, um, you know you've got some weather concerns or whatnot or you've got you know people doing tires on the, uh, the back of a jeep right you get salt up here in michigan that kicks up the road in the winter um all these different variables that go into that so um it's great for any any type of garment that is nylon as well as anything that really you can decorate that you're not wearing that that you want to really maintain that abrasion especially if uh we've got a, a, a gentleman up in canada and he decorate all he does is do hockey bags and soccer soccer bags and when they're traveling they're throwing those things in the back of a greyhound yep. um this not only is able to adhere to that but it's also able to maintain the integrity of, of uh, staying on there oh yeah I can, I can. one other thing really quickly on this one um you'll notice we only have white and black on there that being said you had mentioned before about the icons this is layerable so if you have uh you know, a nylon garment that somebody wants the easy, easy wheat electric and turquoise on. Basically, we, we have a solution for that. You would put this easy wheat extra down first, and then you would layer it on top of it. Now you can still say yes to that job. Yep. yep. You just have to cut both exactly the same size, or do you actually make one bigger than the other when you layer? It all depends on the artwork. Um, it depends on if, if you're looking to, to offset something or, or contour something. But for the most part, it could be the same size. Okay. Which makes cool. it easy, too, because then you're just working with the same file. Yeah. Cut it and then just load the material in and cut it again. And it's all, you know, it's all on a clear carrier, so it's not that hard to align. Uh, all right. So talk to me about glow in the dark because... Oops, we have two different types. And, you know, with screen print ink, I you can you kind of have two different types as well. So mm -hmm. talk to us about this easy weed glow first. So yes, we technically have two different <laughs> types. They really fall all fall under the same category, but um we have two glow in the dark versions. One is gonna be your basically it's just easy weed glow. It's uh, it's a glow in the dark material. Uh, it's fantastic to use. I, I'm a big fan of ours because a lot of other vinyls or even different technologies that you see out there that have a, a glow in the dark feature to them almost have this green or yellowish tint to it. <coughs> Excuse me. As to where ours is almost really a true white. I don't know if you can really see that well, but um, this is actually easy glow. And this is a great example of it. So I made this for, for uh, a promotion purpose, but uh, it, it was, it's a camping shirt. So it's, adventure um adventure camp tree and it's nice because you have the, the what would be deemed just regular white vinyl or a white uh screen print left chest there but since ours is more of a pure white i'm able to use the easy glow feature on this and while they're outdoors all day then they come inside and it glows in the dark it's just kind of a cool fun fun effect for them so um if you do have white you can you can use our easy glow and then if you see here i added the the brick to the to the sleeve there just again to give it more value but we also just launched um five new colors in in the the glow in the dark which is pretty cool and pretty fun and you unique um as before as to it was only kind of that white point type of color so we just introduced um five new neon colors that are now uh glow in the dark so that's a good great uh picture that that we have there on the the right Great for kids parties or anything like that i made my daughter uh, uh for halloween I, I got uh black pajamas and i ended up cutting out a uh she loves pink everything's got to be pink so i did neon pink and the in the glow in the dark i did a skull uh silhouette and then she loves it she'll run in her bedroom and then she's glowing so it's it's uh, a very cool product yeah and and again <laughs> the, the just like i said with like screen print you have some glow in the darks where it just is either a murky color when it's not glowing, uh, maybe white, and then once it's been charged and it's in the dark, then it glows. 
And then there's others where they're actually a color, you know, under normal UV or any other type of light. But then once you're in the dark, it's still glowing. Um, right. Really cool. A uh, couple different ways. Um, all right. So subblock, um, kind of, you know, I, what I like about a lot of um, <laughs> Caesar's products are just the name says it all. And, uh, you know, for those, you know, if you're looking at the photo here, uh, so you might have an, a sublimated print. Um, what you're going to battle a lot of the time, dye migration. So, so talk to us a little bit about this, Chad, and how this uh, works and why is it, you know, better than maybe using an easy weed when you have a product like this. For sure. So um, sublimation, it really took off about four or five years ago. and a lot of it is within the sports world. So soccer, um, basketball, even baseball. I think the Arizona Diamondbacks started doing all sorts of different camo. And um, a lot of sublimation uh, started to trend. And the problem that we ran into with heat transfer vinyl is sublimation. The process of sublimation is, is it's a gaseous ink. And when it, when it uh, goes into, it's got to be 100% white polyester, but when you heat apply it onto white polyester, it literally gases into that white polyester. So when we're talking about a hand or a feel of a product, sublimation is the ultimate because there's none. It's just not literally the good one. Um, that said, it's very difficult if you're looking to do something like this in-house because you have to have the ability to cut and sew, meaning, yeah. um, you know, you could have a white polyester shirt and a, a sublimation printer and you could heat apply something onto that, but most folks don't want to wear a hundred percent white polyester and just have something, something there. So um, a quick way to, for you to tell if your, your garment is sublimated or dyed because there are pigment dyes to be able to achieve this type of look too, um, is just flip it in, on the inside of the garment under, on the underneath there. And if it's white, it means it's sublimated. And since it's a gaseous ink, when you're heat applying again onto something, that gas can reactivate and what we call dye migrate or bleed through. So if it's a white vinyl on a red sublimated camo shirt, you'll see a lot of that bleed through the, the white vinyl. So this product actually has a charcoal base backing underneath it that prevents and blocks any bleed through or dye migration. No, it makes complete sense. And you're, you're totally right. I mean, especially in the jerseys. Oh my, these have become very popular. Um, and yeah, I, it's not a problem just with HTV. It's any decoration process. Um, sure. You know, it, it just dye migration, <laughs> something we didn't deal with before the all these sublimated uh, fabrics. But uh, again, that's why every <laughs> process, every one of these um, types of uh, HTV have a time and place. Um, there's a reason we have too many slides. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, hey, we, we talked, you, we, you couldn't cut any of these. Um, yeah. Puff, you know, Puff, here's another one. It, it is, it's a, it's a three-dimensional look and feel. It's still different than the brick. The brick has that silicone versus the Puff is going to be, what, a little bit softer or? Definitely softer. Um, basically, it's it's just a, a flat vinyl that you, you mirror your image and um, this is, just for the audience, but for most of our products, you're going to mirror your image because you're actually cutting into the adhesive portion of that. Then you flip it over and heat apply it. Um, but this is uh, basically, it's a flat vinyl. And then when you heat apply it, there's um, that's when the, the puff actually activates. Um, this is a very cool product. It's kind of a 90s type of look, type of vibe to it. Um, you know, we have it in a plethora of different colors. We also just introduced a metallic uh, puff, which is very, very cool. And again, just something unique that other technologies can't do right now. Um, I do have a soap. Go ahead. It's pretty no, cool. Puff, you're, you're, you're absolutely right about... Um, and the market wants puff right now. <laughs> they, do. they do want puff. And um, yeah, it, it just... Perceived value, you, you know, you you said it earlier, and you're so right. Um, I have so many conversations with shops. Um, the hand, the hand 
is often something that we decorators stress about a lot more than our customers do. Our customers would rather, they want it to look perfect and to have that special effect way more than they care about how it actually feels against them. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, hey, this is bad. But, you know, like pop, it, it's going to, you're going to have more of a feel of it. If you put it on a thin shirt, you're going to kind of feel it a little bit more potentially um, <clears throat> or, or some of these, you know, and, and DTF, the DTF is, does not have the best hand, especially if it's a big print. Um, guess what? We, we learned it took, it took us a long time, but the customer doesn't care as much as we do, <laughs> Chad. They would Very rather true. it look really cool and, and actually feel good here. They don't care what they feel against their chest. They really don't. Um, we yeah. think they don't. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree. Um, you know, it's all subjective, obviously, but I, I think that um, I would venture to say any cut only product that we have and a majority of our digital medias that we're not going over in this webinar, but we have a, a several different digital medias for wide format printing and cutting um, to me are going to have a way softer hand and feel than DTF. I think DTF does not feel very good. Um, that said, I get it. There's a rhyme and reason for it. So better um, than most uh, screen print even too. I mean, again, I thought the hand when I first got in vinyl kind of felt like vinyl. But yep. then, you know, within it's the past, you know, five, seven years, it was like, whoa, it went from customers not loving the feel to preferring it because yep. it, it again, it's come a long way in the past 15, 20 years um, when it comes to just how easy it is to weed, how how good it feels um, and just the, the actual uh, performance of it. Because, again, like we yep. said, like people think, oh, it would come off and so forth. <laughs> Five, you know, the past five, seven years, there's nothing more durable and properly applied right. than, than HTV. I mean, not even close. Um, and properly applied. You, you said it there. Exactly. Time, temperature, pressure. Respect the three variables. If, <laughs> if, if it says that it should be applied at this temperature for this amount of time at this pressure, there's been some R&D that went into that. And if you For don't sure. respect it, you, yeah, you're, you're just not going to get the results. And I love what you said earlier, Chad, about just because it applied doesn't mean it's going to survive all those wash cycles. You, you really need to do it, you know, completely. Um, Chad, do you ever recommend that these HTV be pressed a second time? Do you have an opinion on it? Um, personally, uh, I we second press any heat applied graphic because it doesn't take us much time and it's not the worst idea and sometimes you can also apply some pretty school special effects with um different types of you know not not always but you know you have craft you have parchment and even gloss paper can sometimes yep. change that look um and you're killing two birds at the same time you're giving it a second press to just little peace of mind and you could apply, you know, a mat or, or some other type of look. So what, what's CSER's recommendations there? Um, so, and I agree with you definitely, um, when it comes to our products, as long as you follow the proper application instructions, we're setting, we're, we're, we're setting you up for success. Um, that said, uh, you know, we have end users that call in sometimes and say, well, you know, I, I pressed it and the customer called me after three washes that, you know, something's going on here. And it's like, well, let's dive in and, and work and, and figure out what's going on here. Um, but come to find out more times than not, it's them using a press that they got, got on Amazon yeah. for 200 bucks. Right. Yep. So it, to piggyback off of what you're saying earlier, it's, it's very important to invest in the right tools, not only from, uh, from the cutters, but also a proper heat press um, that that has a reputable name because that's that's your biggest tool. In regards to double pressing, as long again, as long as you follow all of our application instructions, you should not need to. There is not a need to. For peace of mind, however, um, I tend to do so personally. And kind of what you had mentioned earlier too is it doesn't take you long to hit it again. I probably won't hit it for the full amount of of no. The, no. application but yeah if i can if i can hit it again for another four seconds five seconds um again just for peace of mind yeah i i, I tend to do so myself okay yeah make makes complete sense um 
reflective. Reflective, um, you know, can look a little bit, a lot like um, a lot of like silver metallic, but mm -hmm. it actually reflects. And anybody, again, I, I, I've done a lot of screen printing and screen print transfers. Reflective ink is crazy expensive. And, yes. you know, it, um, but it's, in certain applications, it's 100% necessary. I mean, if you are doing a job for uh, construction or, or any of those, like, and they're doing safety wear, they they often not only want, but they need that reflective uh, capability. So, yeah, talk to us a little bit about, you know, what all goes into this, because it's, it's not metallic. It, it's different. It is different, and, and it's really for public safety. Um, that's really where reflective vinyl got its got its uh, boom from. Was um, there's something called an ANSI certification or ANSI certification that um, EMS, firefighters, construction workers wearing vests, um, any sort of if you need to be visible at night, you're required to use a specific uh, material that is ANSI. Uh, compatible back back to certifications um it is very 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 expensive <laughs> uh, so that said we have a great alternative for that um <coughs> excuse me and we actually have a lot of folks that are out in the field uh whether doing construction or their their ems or um, firefighters that may want their own customized uh, maybe they have uh, some kids that they want to, you know, they want to put their initials on there or they want to put their own initials on there. Or they have a, a logo that means something to them. You can still customize on those garments with our product at a, a much more affordable price point. In addition to setting yourself apart from, from anybody else. But it also, to me, it has a, a very, very good reflectiveness and you put them side by side, you might notice a slight difference, but for the price point, if you're just looking to do a, a custom, separate custom thing, um, it's a, a fantastic alternative. Yeah, no. Um, and again, a lot of other um, non-apparel items. I mean, again, the AHT, like you said, if you could put it on a heat press, you can apply really this to yeah. any type of fabric. A lot of folks doing um, pet collars, uh, you know, so they're walking at night, yep. you know, stuff like that. So. That makes complete sense. Uh, glitter. Okay. And glitter, uh, we're going to talk about this. There's a couple different types of glitter, essentially. Yes. Um, so glitter. If we can you probably hit all three of them right now if you want to, just because <laughs> there's, there's a lot. <laughs> um, yeah. But glitter, yeah. So glitter, um, glitter vinyls, since it came out, has always been super popular. Um, we have what's called our, our glitter itself. And that is, um, again, it's, it's easier to show on the camera here, but probably hard to hear, but it's textured. It has that flake. Almost sand, like a sandpaper glitter. Yeah. It has a flake to it. Um, <clears throat> great for, uh, you know, if let's say you're doing a, a name and number with easy weed or eco stretch for a uh, baseball team and it's 12 and it's Smith. Well, if mom wants one, maybe she wants to have, you know, a, a little touch of, of, again, something that uh, other technologies, not necessarily screens per se, but other technologies can't achieve. This is actual um, flaked glitter that it, that is heat applied. Our, if you take our white glitter, you can actually sublimate on top of it, which is very cool and unique. Very cool. Um, and then we have, I think, two others that are going to be similar to that. We'll, we'll touch on them when we get there, but, um, yeah, I mean, it, it's, again, it's in the name, but it's always been very, very popular and it continues to be one of our best. You know, yeah. And I, this is an effect that yes, you can accomplish through screen printing, but screen printing also has limitations with it. Now, <laughs> I mean, glitter, I don't care if you're cutting or screen printing it, uh, detail can be a little bit of an issue sometimes, but you know, as a screen printer, I, we've got to use like a 60 mesh or smaller screen, which means oh. it can't really hold hardly any detail at all. And you're going to be able to cut a lot smaller detail. I, I got to think with this versus what a 60 mesh screen can actually yeah, was, do. The flake is I so good. 
I was going to say, um, our glitter is actually, you know, I've cut some very small, intricate stuff with it. This would be a perfect example of when you use a 60 degree blade, um, but some, like small cursive lettering, because when you weed this um, product, it actually kind of rips a little bit because the, the carrier is so tacky and aggressive, you're able to really weed and, and um, pull away fine detail and it, it still maintains on the, the, the carrier there. Yeah. Um, holographic, okay. yeah, holographic is a great uh, material. Again, it's one of those special effect, visually uh, unique materials, but where we really see a benef benefit in this is um, it's really a good alternative for rhinestones. So, Zach, I don't know if you've ever worked with rhinestones, but I, if anybody <laughs> has that has watched this, knows how painstaking it is, because basically the process is you have to take stencil material, cut very small holes in it, then place all your rhinestones, making sure they stay face side up on the, the stencil. Then you take an application tape over top of it. And um, while the, the finished product is great, it's very time consuming and labor intensive at, at first. So um, if you take our graphic, you know, the, then the customer washes it. And they didn't follow the wash instructions and ruined yeah. it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No. If you take our holographic material and you cut very, very small holes, you can achieve that same look without having to go through that pain <laughs> in, in the beginning. So like this is a great example, but this is all, it looks like rhinestones, but it's just our holographic material cut into the small circles and the, and the detail, the, the shape there. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah, you just, and I, I just also like the, um, the pattern print, you know, the rainbow and, and so forth. Is yeah, there's really some, the rainbow one's pretty cool. Um, very much so. All right, metal. So, and again, I'm going to just keep going back to screen printing. So when it comes to metallic, um, there are, there's the small flake metallic, and then there's essentially that chrome mirror look. And really cool you guys have HTV exactly the same way because some customers want the small flakes, some of them want the mirror. Yes, so this is gonna be your more mirror finish. So as opposed to the, the Easy Weed Electric is gonna be more of a uh, kind of a, not really a reflective, but a, a kind of a shape, more shape-shifting, I guess you could say. As to this is gonna be more of that mirrored look. Um, I do have a, a small sample here, but you can kind of see um it's got a chrome almost a chrome like finish and um again it's just really just separating yourself from um you know you, you could have screen on the whole whole front but if you apply this on the the bottom left uh area of the the garment or the, the left chest or sleeve um just creating a different effect that that is is difficult to achieve with some other products some other technologies i should say well and it's what everybody has to remember is HTV has no minimum, you know, screen printing. Sure. There's no way I am making something for one. There's just no <laughs> way. Uh, and they and just have methods, just, have no minimum, but they're not what can do things that screen print can do because it's just CMY and K. You know, you can't create that effect necessarily. Uh, and to that point, you know, there's times where if somebody comes and they need, 10 colors on 60 garments, well, it's really not beneficial for you to do it in heat transfer. So there's there's avenues for everything. Yep, absolutely. Um, so the sparkle, so this, yeah. Yeah, so this is, um, when we were talking about glitter, this is gonna be kind of more of a, uh, we have this and we have one more after this, but this is um, a different touch to that, to that uh, glitter type of look. It's not, actual flakes so it's um almost um it's a little bit thicker than your easy weed or anything like that but it's going to have these little silver flakes baked in each one of these different colors here so it's going to still give it a, a look of glitter it's going to be softer than the flakes because there's no actual flake um but it is a little bit more on the the niche side of it's going to have more of a rubber feel um and it does have you know the, these small 
very small silver flakes within it that makes it unique and different. I like to use this product a lot in conjunction with other materials just to kind of give it that separation. Okay. All right. Flock. flock. I, I'm a flock fan. I, I think and flock is pretty cool. <laughs> uh, yeah. <clears throat> it, it is. Um, so th this, to piggyback off earlier, when I mentioned our, our top three products, so brick, flock, and puff. Those are our, our top three right now. And the, the common theme between all of them is the texture. So this is probably my, my favorite material that we have right now as far as a, a texture or feel type of product, um, as opposed to, to the Eco Stretch and just the straight vinyl, just because to me, this gives something a really good retail value yeah. or, or the perception of retail. Um, it has almost like a suede feel to it. So when you're working with it, um, you know, I have a, a couple garments here I'll show you, but um, I showed this product at a class I taught, uh, I taught last year, and I'm not kidding you, I had about three people trying to hand me $40 for, for this garment. And the reason being is we're seeing a couple things. Again, that suede finish, um, the nice feel to it, as opposed to a couple of years back, flock was not very popular, but now people want want more of a feel thing to it but also people are liking tone on tone a lot which is very cool but i made this shirt or i didn't make this shirt i brought this shirt with me and people were going bananas over it. And you can kind of see in the light there of the suede finish right so this is a perfect example of tone on tone um but with using flock i mean it's super soft and it's got this suede like finish so um, by using this material, you know, you could use easy weed on this garment and, you know, maybe it charge 20 bucks for it, but by, by giving it this effect and feel and look, it probably costs you, I don't know, a dollar, 10 cents to cut this, but you can sell this garment for $45 easily. And you can see it hanging in a store. You're creating that, that perception and, and, and look. Um, so it is definitely one of my favorites right now. And the, the biggest, uh, the biggest reason is, again, made this garment just out of, um, you know, kind of for fun and let's see what we can ach achieve and show other folks what they can do with our materials. We have the only layerable flock in, in the industry. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. So when you do that, by doing that, I don't know if you can hear this, but I mean, this is almost a patch. Mm -hmm. So I'll try and give you a visual here, but this is about five layers of flock. And I mean, you're really creating a patch yeah. without having to outsource something and giving something really cool, unique textures and feels. Um, we have a gentleman down in, in um, Mexico um, who's a, a great partner of ours. His name's Haslow Geek, but a majority of his um, business is just used building up our flock and creating this really cool um dimension and detail and he'll he'll put like easy weed electric on the top of something so again you can use different materials in conjunction with this so um for one just from a, a cut only vinyl material if you it, if you want some kind of texture or feel for it i highly encourage people to check this out but also just from the layerability standpoint of it um i, I wore that garment over at, at atlantic city a couple weeks ago and i had so many people too many people touching me for one, but <laughs> everybody asked me, how'd you do that? How'd you do that? Oh, where'd you get this? And I said, it's just flock. I just layered it up. It costs $3.70 to cut it. And, you know, you could sell that thing for $70. Um, and like I said, flock, puff, and brick. Not only does it have the unique feel, but it's the look. You you don't even have to. One, you can you can notice it from a few feet away like ooh, what is that and then the second thing happens like you said before you know it, they're touching you because they, they exactly. want to, they're like oh my and exactly. and that's when you know you know you're hitting the home run and um yeah no I, I i definitely flock is really cool i've seen flock equipment on screen presses and i have no idea how that could ever be fun yeah. with that that one's got my mind boggled. I'm not sure how that would be yeah. achievable either, but 
No, I've seen it, and it's it's a nightmare. And again, you could never you'd be doing the only time you'd ever be doing that is, and it's just because I I know they were print and form, but it was like um, where they're printing Abercrombie or Victoria's Secret stuff. You know, they're doing yeah. thousands of them. Um, but yeah. yeah, that that capability that it's that fashion. Chad, I have a uh, client I've done a lot of consulting for. They're located in downtown Manhattan, and yeah. They use a lot of your guys' HTV because they're doing, they're like putting names on Louis Vuitton bags and stuff like that. You know, they're, oh, yeah. they're, and they're using these really special effects because, you know, it's the high end um, product and the perceived value. And yeah, it, it's things you can do. Yeah. Um, sure. Twinkle. So, Twinkle is Twinkle, yes. Um, Twinkle is would be sparkle, twinkle, glitter. We get <laughs> we've got them all. Um, this one's kind of unique, and it's probably hard to see here, but um, I like to consider this a combination of glitter and reflective in a glitter type of format, if you will. Um, this one's pretty cool because this is our rainbow. Uh, twinkle product here but it still has um the, the glitter underneath it's not the silver glitter that that's incorporated with sparkle but this is almost a like a reflective finish so it's great for um you know if you're a jogger or something like that and you want to have somewhat of a glitter effect but you don't want to just use the reflective this kind of combines the two of them and it's really kind of encapsulated over top um, with a, with a thin layer. So it's a, it's a definitely a unique product. Um, is it going to be for everyone just like the sparkle? Probably not, but I would definitely encourage folks to check it out. And, um, you know, again, for, for any of these there, you never know when somebody's going to come up and say, Hey, can you do this? Or, Hey, I need this out of all of our product. And I think you had mentioned it earlier. You can, you, you're really limitless. It just depends on how much time you want to spend um, in regards to different colors and weeding and, and whatnot. But um, I mean, for kids these days, for less than a thousand dollars, you can get into a startup business with a, a inexpensive press and one of our cutters and, you know, you get it, some rolls of vinyl and away you go. So I would encourage anybody that that does have um, a, a cutter and a press to check this out. Uh, not only this, but all of our products. But um yeah, it's again just one of those unique type of effects, and, and um, has a rhyme and, and reason and a place for it. Yeah, again, a lot of tools in the tool belt. Um, use them at different times. All right, we're on our last slide, and you guys have come out with Easy Color, which is direct to vinyl, right? Like, talk, talk to us a little <laughs> bit about this. When did this come about, Chad? Uh, so this launched, I actually know exactly when this launched because I think it was March of last year, <clears throat> the second week of March, um, because I was working remote, uh, one of my kids, I had to stay home and, and be, be dad, but also work at the same time. And at the time I was fielding all of our leads through our info email and, um, uh, my fault, I did not work with our marketing team and understand when the launch of this product was going to be <laughs> until I had about 150 emails in my info inbox of where can I get it? Where can I get it? Where can I get it? And it really is a game changer um, just because, yes, this is DTV. It might be a little poke, poke the bear, poke some fun, but um, it is direct to vinyl. Um, it is a transfer type of paper but it's not. So traditional transfer papers, um, you could get and, and get them in packs and they were, um, they were great. They had, they had their place, um, you know, more for like one, one off stuff, you know, yep. maybe a happy birthday or, um, in memoriam or a family reunion or something like that. Um, because you could just print them from your desktop printer and then heat apply them or, or apply them with an iron, whatever, maybe you could do something in house at home for, for an, an inefficient cost. We developed um, an inkjet compatible, meaning anybody that's listening to this, you probably have a printer at home that's an inkjet printer, um, direct to vinyl. 
and the difference between ours and traditional transfer papers is this is a water-based finish. So similar to the eco stretch and how we developed that, it makes it incredibly soft. So going back to the hand, it is super soft. You know, when we're talking about wide format, which is kind of my, my uh, wheelhouse, the downside to digital wide format and heat transfer for the longest time was the, the feel. It was really yep. heavy. Um, but we, we, we've accomplished a, a, a material called S print. So if anybody is listening with a, a printer cutter, S print is going to be the equivalent of like uh, the eco stretch um, it's super soft hand, uh, incredible finish. It's, it's a great for a wide format, but we've now allowed the end user that has just a regular home printer, hopefully pair it with our cutter, but you don't have to, um, any cut software will work. I mean, I've even ran in a, a pinch where I had to use this with scissors <laughs> at an open house one time, but, um, basically it's just eight, eight and a half by 11 or 11 by 17 sheets. You just feed straight through the printer. Um, you, you would want to cut or print out of your cut software with registration or crop marks. And then from there, you send it to your printer, come back, load the, the paper onto the cutter, have it read the, the registration. It comes back and cuts it. And then the only difference is you're not cutting into the adhesive on this. So you're not going to mirror your image. You would then take like a transfer paper or what we call mask, layer it over top of it, peel it away, and then you can heat apply it. Now for something that's, contoured or just like a big like you can see this but it's just like a big one one solid piece the nice thing about this is you can actually just peel it up with your hand and the heat when you get closer to the heat it actually conforms towards the garment so you don't have to, to mask it if it's not individual letters but this is um we've now allowed anybody with just a home printer to be able to print and apply full color graphics um without having to invest in a, a wide format printer or um, any sort of other technology. So anybody at home with a printer and, and a uh, cutter, and you can also see the stretch, stretchability to it. I mean, traditional transfer papers are not gonna stretch like that. And, and those old, the ink jets and so forth, they left a polymer hand around things. Yes. It just didn't feel great, um, you know. Uh, yeah. And, so my know, success story or my, my horror story, I should say with this, <laughs> um, I went to an open house one time and, and I brought some sheets of the product with me, but I forgot my applied garment and I'm like, Oh no, what am I going to do here? So I ran down to the hotel lobby. I think it was in Minnesota or something that I, uh, I'm sure nobody from the Timberwolves is listening to this, but if you do, please don't cease and assist. It was just a sample. <laughs> so I grabbed a, the Minnesota Timberwolves logo. I printed it from the hotel lobby ran upstairs, took some scissors, cut it, contoured around it, and used the iron at the hotel, brought the garment to the, to the show. <laughs> and I'm not kidding. I had some people say, how did you do this? How did you make this? And made I said, have a, home printer, have a home printer? <laughs> yeah, I said, I made this about two minutes ago in the hotel lobby in my room. <laughs> and uh, people are really blown away by it. I mean, the success of this stuff has been, been fantastic. And um, again, me coming from the wide format world, this is, I mean, way softer than, than your traditional um, digital medias. And uh, it, we're, we're, we're really proud of this one just because we've now opened up a, an avenue for anybody at home to be able to make full color graphics and, and make garments or anything with non-apparel related for um, just put the sheets in your print. Yeah, again, it, everything's evolving. Um, like we've talked about, uh, gosh, the industry likes to go through cycles um heat transfers are more popular than even ever they're yep. you know the, um we have so many different ways to decorate products every one of those methods has a time and place screen printing's going nowhere htv is going nowhere dtf yet you know it comes down to how many are printing the artwork and what the customer is asking for you know and, and again what's really cool about all these different uh caesar products are just these one of a kind special effects. Um, are, do you want to use it for a thousand piece or? Yeah, I'm sure there are a lot of um, shops who will do high run or, you know, again, use it for those low run um, and make a really good margin off the product. Because, like I said, I have a client in just Manhattan and they don't do $20 shirts, they do $100 shirts because 
they're creating these really cool looks using HTV yep. um, and, and some other uh, decoration methods that just that one of a kind. Um, Chad, thank you so much uh, for participating today. Um, our viewers can learn more about all these different products at CaesarUSA.com. Did I, is that correct? What, what's the C fact? CaesarNA as in North America. North America. Yep. S-I-S-E-R-N-A.com. Um, and again, uh, thank you for, for having us. It's It's been a pleasure. I enjoyed our conversation. Um, hopefully people will stick around to the end and they'll get buried in these slides. <laughs> but um, yes, thank you for, for the kind words. And um, I, I think you're correct that heat transfer definitely has its place. Um, we're seeing more of it than ever. And um, yeah, we're, we're, we're proud to, I'm, I'm proud to be uh, with Caesar. So, um, and it is Caesar for, for folks out there wondering, I get Sizer, sister, you know, everything, <laughs> everything. By. I, I stopped like correcting. First four times. I, like... I stopped correcting a long time ago, but if you go to just <laughs> Caesar.com, it may take you to our Italian website. So it's CaesarNA.com. And, um, I, I want to thank everybody that's, that's listening to this, um, for sticking around. And if you do have questions, on where you can get our product or questions about our product in general, um, we could be reached at info at CaesarNA.com. Thank you so much, Chad. Have a good weekend. And again, hopefully everybody enjoyed this presentation. Check out CaesarNA.com. Thanks, Chad. Thank you. Take care.